Hello and welcome to Devil's Advocate. At the end of a week when the Maoists have been on the front pages practically every day, we present a very different perspective to that of the government. My guest today is the author, essayist and Booker Prize winner Arundhati Roy. Arundhati Roy, I want to talk to you about how you view the Maoists and how you think the government should respond. But first, how do you view the recent hostage taking in Bihar where four policemen were kidnapped and kept kidnapped for eight days and one of them, Lucas Tete, murdered? Well. Look, I, um, I don't think there's anything revolutionary about killing a person that's in custody. So, you know, I have made a statement saying that I thought it was just as bad as the police killing uh, Azad as they did in a fake encounter in, in Andhra. But, you know, I, I actually sort of shy away from this atrocity-based analysis that's coming out on our TV screens these days because really you you know part of it is meant for you to lose the big picture about what is this war about who wants the war who needs the war i want very much to talk about the big picture but before i come to that let me point out something else in the last one year the maoists have beheaded francis induar and sanjay ghosh they've killed lucas tete they've kidnapped other policemen there have been devastating attacks in dantewada there's been the sabotage of the janeshwari express in your eyes mm. Does this amount to legitimate strategy and tactics or does it detract from the Maoist cause? Well, uh, I mean, I don't think you can bundle them all together. For example, the train accident, I don't think anybody knows who did it yet. Everyone's you know? convinced that the yeah. Maoists Everyone are involved. Everyone can be convinced, but it's not enough to be convinced. You've got to have the facts. And the, the facts are unraveling. Every day it's unraveling. That, that what about Dante story. Vada? What about the yeah, beheadings, let, yeah, the kidnappings, yeah, let me come the to killing? That. You see, the thing is that now what's happening is there's a situation of conflict, of war. So you have uh, set out a litany of the terrible acts of violence that have taken place, inflicted by one side, and left out the picture of what's going on on the other side, which is that you have the you know tens of thousands of uh, something like 200,000 paramilitary forces closing in on these poorest villages evicting people, burning people, massacres. So, the co of course, all violence is terrible. But if you want to get into what is actually going on, we'll have to discuss it in, in slightly more detail. Because so what you're suggesting is that we have a spiral of violence where what one side does to the other justifies the response. And in a sense, you don't want to blame one or the other. You see them both as equally guilty. No, I don't. I don't see them both as equally guilty. And I don't want to justify anything. I see a government breaking every sort of um, law in the constitution that it has about tribal people, an assault on the homelands of millions of people. And some, there is a resistance force that's resisting that. Now, that situation is becoming violent, it's becoming ugly, and if you start trying to extract morality out of it, you're going to be in a mess. But one thing that's crystal clear from what you said is you see the government as the first person, the first party at fault. The bigger fault, the first fault is the government's. You see the Maoists as simply responding. I see the government absolutely as the major aggressor. As far as the Maoists are concerned, of course, their ideology is an ideology of uh, overthrowing the Indian state with violence. However, I don't believe that if the Indian state was a just state, if people, ordinary people even had some minor hope for justice, the Maoists would just be a marginal group of militants with no popular opinion. So the Maoists get support and strength from the fact that you don't believe that the Indian state is just? Let me tell you that every, forget the Maoists, I mean every uh, resistance movement armed or unarmed and the Maoists today are actually fighting to implement the com constitution and the government is vandalizing it. It's vandalizing So the real the constitutionalists are the Maoists and the real breakers of the constitution is the government. Yeah, not the Maoists. All resistance movements. I'm saying all resistance Let